Uh, I'm Jeff DeBelko with the Woodrow Wilson Center in Washington, but we're in Oslo, Norway, for the Global Environmental Change and Human Security Conference. I'm with Neil Adger, a professor at the University of East Anglia, the Tyndall Center. Uh, and Neil is somebody, uh, co-editor of the journal Global Environmental Change, somebody who's really both followed and been a key contributor to a wide set of literature on climate change and adaptation, climate change and security, uh, climate change and migration, a range of different topics. Um, so, uh, and in fact, a uh, new uh, editor of a new book, Adapting to Climate Change, Thresholds, Values, and Governance. It's published by Cambridge. And so, Neil, I'd like to ask just kind of the basic question, which um, is on, can we, can we adapt to the coming climate change? And are there limits to that adaptation? Uh, we can adapt to climate change. I don't want to be uh, entirely negative here. I think there are lots of opportunities for change. There are lots of things that would be harmonious with mm -hmm. sustainable development. Um, but saying that we can change and we can adapt to climate change doesn't mean to say that we necessarily will adapt to climate change. And I think that's the key issue that we're trying to get across here. Mm -hmm. um, there are limits to adaptation. Um, Many of these limits are mutable, they're changeable, and we, you know, they're to do with the, the way society uh, looks at progress and, uh, and the way that we are objectives in actually adapting to climate change, given that we're not very well adapted to uh, the present climate that we have. Um, so that's the points we're trying to get across uh, in this book. Um, first of all, there are going to be significant thresholds in the way that the climate actually changes in uh, very significant almost regime shifts in climate and in some of the ecosystem services associated with it uh, in water resources and in various other areas and those are going to be particularly difficult um, to adapt to because they may be outside our range of experience and the climate science tells us that these are now beginning to identify these thresholds so that's uh, one area. Mm -hmm. A second area uh, I think is around these issues of values. What it is and that we actually want to adapt to, where do we want to go, what represents progress, what represents sustainable development uh, in this context. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, we, there is divergence on this. We don't necessarily have the mechanisms by which we actually discuss and work through what it is we want to do. If we take coastal management, for example, do we want to protect the coast at all cost? Um, do we want to protect people where they're living at the minute? Now, clearly, this is going to impose on them if people are going to have to move from hazardous areas um, because of health impacts of climate change, changing disease factors, because of coastal uh, erosion, uh, because of change in flood risk. Um, and we need a, we don't at the minute have the institutions and the dialogue that takes that forward. And the same, even for the Wilson Centre, I know you're interested in this, in terms of uh, international cooperation mm -hmm. for adaptation. Um, we believe, and there's chapters in the book that deal with this, we believe that, um, that international cooperation could be facilitated by resource mm -hmm. scarcity and the challenges that climate change can bring to transboundary water resources and, uh, and rivers. Um, but we don't really have those institutions or functioning institutions at the moment. Uh, uh, let me ask you about what has, at least for me, been uh, a set of technologies or interventions that have been kind of beyond the pale, beyond the discussion. Um, but it's a question of whether it will, a, as we face the difficulties, political as well as physical, of uh, sufficient mitigation, sufficient adaptation, sufficient, but mm, uh, significant mm, mm, adaptation mm. mitigation, is a question of geoengineering. Mm. How do you see that, less from a technical how-to or how likely, but from the political potential impacts of such uh, an intervention? How does that play in the politics? Um, that's a very, very good question, Jeff. Uh, the, uh, I think we are faced with a huge challenge of mitigation uh, to actually try and reduce the, the potential impacts mm. of climate change. It's not going to be easy. The scale of the, of the actions that are required um, are becoming clear and they're becoming larger because we're continuing to, in, as gl globally, we're continuing to increase our emissions. So the scale of turnaround mm -hmm. in terms of emissions is becoming harder. The scale of the adaptation challenge is also becoming clear and that's part of what we're trying to elaborate and show that this is not going to be easy and it's going to be painful, it's going
going to be patchy, possibly ineffective in places. Um, so all those raise the, to my mind, the spectre of geoengineering as a, as a trump card, as a get out of jail free card, right. as a you know sort of way out of this. Um, but I think what, um, I think there are significant inherent dangers in just about every geo serious geoengineering um, technology being discussed. Um, and I think the prospect for unilateral action, um, or by a small group of countries, uh, would also then destabilise the global effort towards mitigation and adaptation which is required. So from a political perspective, I think there's significant dangers in it. Um, and uh, I, think, but I think it shows the urgency both for mitigation and adaptation to actually avoid us getting into that, the circumstances where the exceptionalism of the circumstances and the emergency of the circumstances begins where geoengineering, with all its inherent risks, begins to look attractive. Yeah. Boy, that, and I hope that is the response, which is taking mitigation adaptation more seriously rather than seeing it as a, a way out of a tough spot. Mm. But, yeah. I mean, I think the, uh, there are potential opportunities to link both mitigation and adaptation. There are a lot of opportunities to to make development, to redefine progress, to make development harmonious with the principles of sustainable development. And that's the opportunity that we really need to take. Terrific. Well, we'll look to adapting to climate change from Cambridge as well as global environmental change for some of these critical discussions and inputs. Thanks. Thank Steve. you very much, Jeff. Yeah.